Hello, Kingdom Praise Ministries on the air. Hallelujah. We thank the Lord today as we come live from Hartford County, Maryland. Thank God for you that are coming online with us this morning. God bless you. God bless you, family. As you come on online, we're going to give people a few minutes to get online. Then we'll move on with our service today. We're doing uh, things a little differently today, and I'll explain why later for this week and next week, and I will uh, inform you as to why we're doing what we're doing. Um, God is awesome in what he's doing. We had a great Sunday school class this morning. Uh, we thank God for the joint efforts of these two churches, Fellowship Baptist and Praise Ministry coming together. So Roz did our, um, facilitated our lesson this morning from Fellowship Baptist, and we're just so excited about what God is doing. Amen. He's doing wonderful things. So let me just start with a word of prayer, and then we'll go into what's new. Some things are happening. Our format's a little different this morning, and I'll explain that after we have prayer. Father, I thank you right now. I thank you for this opportunity just to call upon your name. Thank you, God. There's nobody like you. There's none before you. And we bless you right now. We bless you on this snowy Sunday morning. You're still good. We bless you right now, God, for being a keeper. Hallelujah. We thank you for being a protector, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for being a, a guide for our lives. Salvation. Hallelujah. It's of you, God. And we thank you right now that you have been a God to forgive all our sins. And we are so grateful, God, for your forgiving power. We're so grateful, God. Not only have you forgiven us, you've given us a power to forgive others. For this, we say thank you. Oh, Father, look on our hearts this morning. You know us name by name. You know us heart by heart, home by home, situation by situation. Look on us this morning, oh God. And please, God, meet us at the point of our need. For we need more of you in our life. We need a closer walk with you. We desire, oh God, to serve you with all our hearts, with all our minds and our strength to love you to love each other. So please, God, grace to love you more, grace to trust you more, grace to serve you more is our prayer. We do give you praise and honor and glory. Now, be with us as we move forth in this worship experience. And we do thank you in advance for what you shall say. Speak through me, O oh God, with clarity and with power. Give me wisdom as to what to say. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. God bless you, my family, this morning. Um, if you notice, our format's a little different. I usually would have someone praying and someone singing and then me preaching and someone praying. Normally what we would do, and members do it, but we are faced with some um, family challenges during this time. And we're trying to, to seek to do God's will in spite of what's going on. I've got good news for you. I've got bad news. Then I got good news. All right. Let me give you the good news first. Um, I've talked to you guys, uh, some of you know, some may not know. If you follow our page, you'll, you'll know I asked that you would pray for my son. He was admitted to the hospital this week um, with pneumonia. They thought that he had COVID pneumonia for a while, and he wasn't taking the treatments that well. He had problems breathing. He was so weak, he could hardly walk. He was so weak to talk, made him lose his breath just to talk. Um, he was so weak that um, he just wasn't himself. And um, he told me um, in a conversation, I sat down beside him in the bed before we went to the hospital. And I said to him, um, how do you feel? He said, it's hard to explain. I feel like I'm detached. And I remember that feeling when I was um, almost close to death, that feeling that of being here, but not being there. So I realized that Whatever was going on in his body was trying to kill him. But God, I'm going to try not to get too emotional this morning, but I can't help it. But God, so um, we dropped him off at the hospital. Of course, you cannot go in. So we had to wait for him to get tested and find out they were going to keep him. And so um, in my mind, I'm praying, asking God for mercy. But I know so many, people, so many people have gone into the hospital and not come out alive. 
I didn't know whether the last time I'd see him or not. But I did the same thing to my wife, but she, sh both of us shared those fears because we recognized not only did he have pneumonia in his COVID season, but he also has um, MS. And MS um, would mess up his system to the place that any small thing affecting him could be a big thing. So um, we were, of course, um, upset and fearful. But I thank God for the strength of Psalm 91. When I started out this year with this psalm, I thought it was for everybody else. We all need to hear this. But I didn't realize that God was having me preach to me along with you because it's already been a rough year. But, and it's been a rough few years. And I'm not the only one out there going through something. This whole um, session this morning, a message this morning is going to be about that. But the going, that's the good news. Let me give you the good news. The good news is this. I get distracted so easily. The good news is this, is that I asked you guys to pray for him on uh, Facebook. And I got so many responses. We're praying. We're praying. And I got so many responses. I actually felt relief off my shoulders. Because sometimes you can be so close to a situation, you can't pray like you need to pray. I don't know if somebody knows what I'm talking about. You don't know how to pray as you ought to pray. But it's always good to know somebody's praying for you. And when I got the message that he had gotten up on his own and gone to the bathroom, I knew God was already starting to work. They had a message that he was feeling better. His breathing was better. They started this new regimen. And I asked you guys to pray that these new antibiotics, they were treating him for COVID pneumonia, but they found out he didn't have COVID. He had community pneumonia. All right, so he didn't have COVID pneumonia. He had all his tests for COVID came up negative. So he didn't have a COVID at all. So they started treating him with like they would a person with pneumonia with a couple of different antibiotics. So this morning, he said, I'm breathing better. And they're talking about sending him home this week. Somebody give God a praise for me, amen. Give God a praise, just thank God. If you don't have anything you like to thank God for, let's thank God for answer prayer. God has heard this prayer. God has heard our cry. He sounds so good. He's starting to joke around again. He's starting to sound like himself again. So we praise God for that. But then that's the good news. The bad news is this. So Friday, my um, I well, I decided, my daughter and I decided because they didn't know whether it was COVID, it went back from COVID to not COVID, COVID to not COVID. We felt like they didn't know what they were dealing with. So we thought before we go back to, we'd already um, stopped going to work because we didn't want to spread to think we had something. So uh, we thought we maybe, we didn't know what he had. We all were with him. So we all would be exposed. So we decided to go and get tested. And I was just going by formality because I didn't have, you know, any symptoms, no real something going on. Nothing happened. I just want to go so I can go to my job and say, look, I, he had, they thought he had it, but here's my, you know, here's my results. I don't have COVID. I can go back to work. And so um, on Saturday morning, um, the test was Friday. Saturday morning, I looked at my results, and it said something like um, positive. And uh, my, <laughs> I had to come tell my daughter, come read this. She said, Dad, do you positive? My, hers is negative. We went to the same test, same car. Hers is negative. Mine's positive. And so I didn't want people wondering and murmuring and wondering, you hear from the horse's mouth, that my test came up positive. And um, I guess I'm still kind of in shock because I'm the person who didn't go anywhere. I went work and home because I have underlying conditions. My doctor told me to really be limited as to where I go. because I'm, I'm at, a, at a certain age now. And I have underlying conditions that magnify this disease. So I was really cautious, washing my hands, wearing a mask. I was wearing double mask. I had two masks on at work. And I know they said this variant got to have. I had two masks on just to be extra safe. And I would come home and I would I wash and dry is right by the kitchen. I come home from work and I drop everything but my underwear right there and put it in the wash machine. And I had a bag. I got it sitting here now. I got a bag. I put all my stuff I use in one bag. And I sprayed with Lysol. So I was very careful, very careful, washing my hands, doing these things. So um, he didn't have it, so he couldn't have given it to me, my son. 
Um, only place I've been is at work, so I don't know. I don't know how I got it, but my test came up positive. And um, I still, I think, I think, I, I think I'm still in shock, but uh, so that's the bad news. But the good news is that uh, my symptoms are really mild to the place that I just thought I was chilly. I had some chills. Um, um, had stomach something going on with me for maybe an hour and it was over. But I didn't see anything unusual. So I have sinus issues anyway. So a running sinus and these things. Up, and I, I have asthma. So shortness of breath here and there. But I was spraying using my inhalers. But when I saw positive, it like it took it out of me. So I wanted to let you guys know that's why we're in this format we're in now, because um, I am being isolated, of course, separating myself from everyone else. Because my daughter is negative. My wife would get her test. She'll be knowing by today or tomorrow whether she is. And then I have my son coming home whose immune system is compromised. So we got a, just a lot going on in this household. So I'm not only soliciting prayer for uh, I'm a soliciting prayer for the whole family. And for those of you out there listening to me, some of you may be facing the same challenges. And um, this uh, diseased, rigged world we're in today can be frightening. It can uh, disturb you, but I'm grateful to God that um, I'm breathing fine. I'm grateful to God. It's kind of weird that my son had all the symptoms. He's negative. I have no symptoms and I'm positive. So. Go figure. I don't know. Where I got it from, I don't know. But now, where do we go from here? It means that I'm going to have to isolate for 10 days. So for this week's service and next week's service, you'll just be seeing me, all right? Because I don't want to uh, be around my daughter who's negative or my wife, anybody, or my son until um, I come through these 10 days of quarantine. So that's what's up with us, all right? So, um, but you know what? I still have um, uh, the joy of the Lord. I still have his peace. I'm still trusting him. Amen. So if you want to know what you can pray for me, pray that none of the symptoms that come along with this disease will rise up in my life. I have several things going on with me that I don't need to have anything aggravate them. And I'm working on some of them things. I thank God for um, allowing me to um, be more cautious of my sugar levels. I thank God for that because I'm also showing a um, for me, the lowest sugar levels I've had in a year because I'm watching what I eat now. And uh, for the last few months, my daughter and I have been trying to cut off on the sugar so we can get our sugar levels straight. Because my, my desire is this. By next year, I want to be off of um, diabetes medication. Amen. And you're telling me that type 2 can be turned around. Well, I want to cooperate with the Holy Spirit, amen, and have it turned around. So that's it. I'm being bare open with you guys. I figured why hide stuff and sneak around and do stuff? Just let me tell you like it is so you you know it's not a rumor that uh, Pastor Eccles is positive. Um, COVID is not a rumor. It's true. You heard it from my own mouth. Do that. My own mouth said it, all right? And um, it's not because I didn't try. I did all I could do to not be this way, but this is what's happened to me. And this disease is prevalent throughout the world, but we are going to just trust in the Lord with all our hearts and lean out. I got other family members that are have been through this already. I have uh, several people have been so close to death. Some of my friends and some of my friends, I, I don't want to think about it right now because I'll get emotional. Some of my friends lost their lives to this. Some of my some of my friends' parents have passed away. It's been a horrible time for us. Uh, we need the Lord on our side like never before. So. This message that I'm going to give is going to be brief. I'm not going to be long. Um, I don't know if it's going to be a teaching or a preaching, whatever it might be, but we're still dealing with Psalm 91. I've never gone through an entire psalm to preach a whole psalm before ever in my life, but God is just leading me to keep going, going through this. It's giving me new things out of the psalm. If you notice the pattern we're going in, I'll do some web, some review as we go through the, as I read through. Uh, if you notice the pattern we're going through, that I'm taking on another verse each week. And bringing out the nuances that they are for our lives. All right, so we're doing that this week also. So if you turn to Psalm uh, 91, we're going to zero in on verses five and six for this, this morning. But I want to kind of read through the psalm. I need to hear it myself. Maybe you don't. I want to hear the psalm for myself. So here we are. Father, we come before this, your holy word. We acknowledge right now that we are, are ignorant in so many areas of our life, but we realize we need you. 
We know we got, we have that much sense to know we need you. Might not be bright on other things, but we know we need you. So we call upon you right now, God, to please breathe a fresh word through our lives, oh God. Give us the encouraging words we need so we don't know that we don't have to worry even when things are dark. We don't have to worry because you're with us. So we present all things, these things to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. And this title, uh, I'm going to read some and comment some, but the title will be, um, I'm under attack. I wonder how many people I got down. And this, this message is not for everybody. Amen. I'm under attack. And um, it's not for everybody, but I know I got some people out there who sense an attack. And it's not a normal thing. The things that we've been going through as a family for the last couple of years have not been normal. They've been uh, above the average type things that happen to people. They've been unusual. They've been strange. They've been extreme. When I was in the hospital uh, with my leg um, infected, the um, the infected area, the um, whelp or the swelling around the leg was so big that when the doctors came in, they jumped. <laughs> the wound specialist came in who's supposed to have seen everything. She said, I heard it was big, but I didn't know it was that big. She actually jumped. She apologized. So when we get afflicted, uh, we don't just get a little bit. Amen. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord will deliver them out of them all. Amen. So we don't just get unusual stuff. My son got sick. Uh, he, um, you know, couldn't walk. And you heard his testimony before, but now he's walking. The other night um, when he came in and fell, we thought he was having a relapse with the um, MS because that was one of the things he would do. He would start falling. It was just traumatic, y'all. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I, I wish I could say I was a strong um, Christian to the place. I never flinch, never get weak, and never cry, but I'm not that person. If you, if you can't accept me being real, this is real. I got to pray through some stuff. I get discouraged sometimes. I cry some. I get afraid sometimes. But thanks be to God for his word. Amen. Thanks be to God for his word. His word is a light. His word is my strength. But all I do is turn to God. He'll give me what I need every time. He'll give me what I need. But look at this psalm here. So we're dealing with I'm under attack. He who dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We found out in this verse that uh, God's names were being brought out here. We found that the secret place is not a place you go. God himself is that secret place. Amen. And when you're in him, he's got you. He, he said, he, he in this verse, it tells us, uh, shall abide under the shadow of the almighty. Almighty has one. He's our shadow, the God who is more than enough. The most high in this verse also speaks of El Elyon. That's the God who, can, who is in control of all the heavens and earth. Y'all know you got somebody on your side that's strong. He controls everything. Amen. I know that storms come my way, but you know, you got the storm, the one who controls the storm, the one who knows when to say peace, be still. Amen. He can still speak peace to your storm. Can I get a witness somewhere out there? He can still speak peace right when you're going through things. He never promised that we would not have affliction, but he promised he would never leave us in those afflictions. So I have that assurance today that God is for us and God is in us. I want you to know if you're struggling with something today, that God has not left you alone. I'm in the room by myself right now, but I'm not alone. Glory be to God. I've got a social distance for 10 days from my family and friends in a, in a, in a room, but you know what? I'm still not alone. You know what's going to happen on these 10 days? You know, I don't have no choice but to get closer to God. So God has a plan in all things he does. I'm not really a big TV person. So I'm not going to be on TV all the time, but I will. I, I am a studier, so I will be in the word of God. Amen. So y'all get ready, get ready, get ready, because I'm going to be in God's face calling out to him because every moment he gives us, it's a time for, I guess he's saying, pull aside and turn away from everything and spend the time with you. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this time. I'm not feeling bad. Isn't that good news, y'all? I'm, 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 I'm very, very mild symptoms. So I don't feel sick. And you know what? That, 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 there's a joy in knowing that God has protected you. That God, although the devil tried to touch you, that God drew the line and said, you can go but so far. Aren't you glad that God drew the line? Some of y'all are dealing with some serious things. I think about people dealing with children that are sick and husbands that are sick, that have cancer. You're dealing with this, but you keep on going. You keep on going. Why? Because you know God is in control and God is going to see you through. God promised never to leave you nor to forsake you. He says in verse 2, I will save the Lord. He is my refuge and my fortune. My God, in him will I trust. So we see here the word Lord. 
capital L O R D means Jehovah, the great I am. Whatever you need, I'm in your body is. Hallelujah. Moses, Moses wanted to know who shall I say is sending me? He said, Tell him I am that I am. And aren't you so aren't you glad that we don't you don't serve a was God? Hallelujah. You don't serve a God of the past. You serve a God that is right now. He is a very present help in the time of trouble. Praise God. So in this psalm, there's so many things here. He's our refuge. He's our Lord. He's our God. My, my God. God has the idea of Elohim. It's a word that speaks of God's creative power, God's uh, sovereign power. So we see the psalm is glorifying God. And people have, uh, I've read a lot about the psalm and studied it and, um, those theologians that are much brighter than I am have argued back and forth who wrote this psalm and go between David and Moses. But I've come to realize that it doesn't matter uh, who penned it. I know the author. How many know the author? Ha! Glory be to God. It doesn't matter who penned it and what circumstance they were in. Because, you know, if you're going to attach a psalm to a circumstance, you can kind of get a clear picture of what that person was going through and how they felt. But you know what? I believe God left this psalm with no name upon it because you and I can apply to our situation. Aren't you glad that God is speaking to us today? I believe God is speaking to us through the word of God. I believe he's speaking to us. In him will I trust. He says in verse 3, surely, hallelujah, he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. He didn't say you wouldn't get snared. Some of us know what a snare is. I ain't talking about before you got saved. Some of y'all been caught before heaven. Anybody got caught in sin? Oh, y'all want to act like y'all like that? Oh, oh, got it all together. I'm not talking about before you got saved. Anybody got caught in a sin? Why you were saved? Since you were a believer, you did something you knew God did not want you to do. But if you have not done that, I want you to know I've been in the snare before. I've been in the snare before that was so deep. I've been in some stuff I couldn't even tell y'all. I've been in some stuff that I'm going to die with in my mouth. Amen. But I thank God today that he saw me in my state. He saw me in my condition. And he delivered me from the snare of a fowler. Aren't you glad about that today? God is a deliverer. No matter what you're going through. God is a deliverer. Now, what you caught in, God can pick you up out of those things. I had my mind renewed. I had to do a lot of praying. But I thank be to God that God deliver me. God deliver me and he can deliver you. I don't care what you're trying to stop doing. You got to know that you can't do it in and of yourself. But God is saying, I am your help. I am your strength. I am your redeemer. And God will pick you out of anything. I know I got it with you somewhere. Somebody knows that you were down in the gutter, but he picked you up. Somebody, you weren't always in the church. You weren't always doing what God called you to do. And since you've been in church, you haven't done everything God called you to do. But somebody, I shout grace. Hey, at mercy. I'm about to run up in this place all by myself. I'm about to run all by myself in this place. Because I can say grace. Ha! At mercy. Hallelujah. God has been rich in grace. And in mercy, I'm excited, y'all. I guess you can see that. He says, surely he shall deliver you from the snare of the fowler and the noise of pestilence. This is a psalm that speaks of pandemics. This is a psalm that has been used during pandemic times. And that's why I really believe we need to pray the psalm over our lives. I really believe it because this is what it's speaking of about the noise of pestilence. It's speaking of disease that's running rampant in our lives. And as we come to our verses for this morning, uh, uh, well, let me keep reading. Let me go to verse four. He shall cover thee with his feathers and on his wings shall thy trust. His truth shall be thy shield and our buckler. So we can see here that God has promised to we, we, we get, I get that message about God being referring to himself as a mother hen who protects his children. Her children, let them know that you're not coming. You're not going to get my child unless you go through me. And that good news? Can't nobody love like a mama can love. Amen. And God let us know that he's got that maternal love for us. He's watching over us. And we can find protection under his wing. He said his truth shall be a shield and a buckler. I mean, no, you can use the truth against the lie. I said you can use the truth against the lie. The truth is a sword. The truth is that shield of faith. Is that shield of faith. That's the truth. Whenever the, the devil tries to shoot fiery darts at you, you lift the shield of faith and say, my God said he will never leave me nor forsake me. You lift your shield of faith. He says you're going to die. No, you say I shall live and not die and declare the word of the Lord. You got to be able to lift that shield of faith to fetch all the fiery darts of the wicked one. Okay, then he, we had, verse, we had um, verse five last week. Thou shall not be afraid of the terror by night, nor the arrow that flieth in the day. I'm going to read verse six nor for the pestilence that walketh in the darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes in the noonday. You know something right here? You know something right here? Uh, trouble will find you at all kinds of times. There's darkness, there's light, and there's noonday. 
So you can't pick and choose uh, the time the trouble will come. You can be in your house, minding your business, doing all you know to do. And guess what? Trouble will still find you. And this is what I want you to see here, that not only is it speaking of uh, physical um, uh, 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 illnesses and attacks, but this psalm has also been known as a exorcism psalm. I know this is new for us, but do your research on it. You'll find out that uh, many uh, church fathers and many uh, church leaders have believed that this psalm would be used to talk uh, and to speak against evil spirits attacking. So what's behind this is not just a physical play coming on, but it's a spiritual warfare that's happening. Now, I don't know what about you uh, that you may not understand that there's some spiritual attacks that are going on. These things aren't natural, that you know you have the enemy. How do I know? He says, thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night. Enemy likes to show up in the darkness of your life. He likes to show up in the dark seasons. In the midnight hour, you think you just can't handle any more stress. He likes to come on in those dark seasons and he brings these things. He says, nor for the arrow that flies by day. Notice the arrows are flying. But doesn't tell you anything about the one that projected those arrows. This is called those daytime sneak attacks. This is called when those people that you thought were your friends, those people you thought met you well, and all the time they were trying to take your place. Arrows shooting in the daytime. They don't want you to know it's really them, but they aim and fire at you. Some of you know that you may feel like you've been targeted. You may feel like your life has been targeted. I remember times in my life, it felt like God had put a big bullseye on my back. Because everywhere I went, there was something going on. There was some kind of trouble. And I felt like he himself was after me. But I come to realize it's the enemy after you. You got to recognize that the closer you get to God, the more the enemy is going to try to discourage you. The closer you get to God, the more he's going to come against you. He's going to come against you with those attacks. Those arrows are flying. Maybe they're flying in your pocket. Maybe you've got some financial uh, uh, struggles right now in your life. Arrows are flying. Maybe they're flying in your family. Maybe your family members are acting crazy. Maybe they're flying on your job. And maybe they're even flying, but I tell you my biggest battles are, maybe they're flying in your mind. You got to put on that helmet of salvation. You know why Ephesians 6 says? Put on the helmet of salvation because the devil will mess with your mind. Some of us have nothing going on. A lot of stuff going on is just mental. We have to let the devil talk to our minds and tell us stuff about ourselves and accuse us of stuff that isn't true about us and tell us we're nothing and nobody and can't do it. Even tell us we're not a child of God. You got to know the devil's lie, what he says about you. You can hear the devil, you can hear God. If you can hear what the devil's saying, why don't you pick your Bible up and hear him say, my sheep, Hear my voice. Huh. Hallelujah, somebody. He says, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger's voice, they will not follow. They follow me. So if you're one of his, let me know if you're one of his. You ought to take time to listen to what God is saying about you. God is you protecting your strength. God has called you to be all he wants you to be. God said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. God will be your strength in the darkest times. God is your strength and your redeemer. You got to ever say these things to yourself. Go to the word of God. You can go to Psalm 91 and pronounce this over your life. No evil shall befall me. Neither shall any plague come near thy dwelling. You got to understand it. Evil and stuff attacks you. God is still with you. God is holding back what could be. A lot of folk have what I have right now and didn't make it. But I thank God right now. I feel good in my body. And I pray that you keep on praying for me. I'll continue feeling good. I'll continue doing what God wants me to do. I thank God right now because he's our strength. And he's our redeemer. So this this. This pestilence here, this arrow that flies by day, nor for the pestilence that walks, or some translations say to stalk you. How I many know you got some stalkers out there? <laughs> you got people who don't want to be a friend on Facebook, but they sneak on your page every now and then just, just to see what you're doing. Stalking. When enemy stalks you too, he looks over your shoulder. He can't read your mind, but he can read your actions. Amen. He's been around a whole lot. He see you peeking at stuff. You're not supposed to peek at, he'll put it all in front of your face, brother. He'll put it all in front of your face, sister, to tempt you and lure you away. He'll, then he'll make you sit back after you do what you do, make you feel guilty. That's no, it's no sin in being tempted. The temptation comes in, the sin comes in when you yield to that temptation. And how many know that God can keep you in temptation? He says that no temptation has taken you, but such as common to man. But God is faithful, will not allow you to be tempted above that which you're able. But with the temptation, also make a way out. How I many know God will always provide a way out? 
some of y'all may feel like you're stuck, but you're not stuck. You need your mind renewed. You're not stuck. You're not a victim. The devil will let you think that you're a victim. I want to remind you, you're not a victim. You're a victor in Christ Jesus. You know who got the victory for you? The victory won over 2,000 years ago. The victory was already won. In Jesus Christ, the victory is won. You're not fighting for victory. You're fighting from the victory. You're fighting from a standpoint of victory. You know, and I sat there and I, I was, my son got sick and I was talking to God some real stuff, y'all. You know how you get real when you get emotional. The stuff hit home to you. I was talking to the real stuff. I said, God, I said, I know you got the power. <laughs> and I know just like me, you don't want to see your children suffer unnecessarily. And God reminded me that he had been in my shoes a long time ago because he watched his son suffer. Hey, glory to God. And God reminded me that the reason why his son suffered was for a purpose. So he was telling me that if my children had to go through something, I had to go through something. It's never without purpose. It's never without plan. And it always has a reason that's salvific. It always has a reason. God takes us through what we go through so we can be more usable. Amen, somebody. He takes us through what he takes us through so we can be more moldable. And God is, I'm saying, God, will what you send relief, God said, I always send relief. You know what? Some stuff God will heal of, God's going to heal us of right now while we're living in this body. And some of us going to experience the healing power. And some of us, have, I know some of you right now have been called out with cancer, weren't supposed to be living, but you're still here. I know some of your, your husbands are out there now. The doctor's saying there's nothing more they can do for you. I know there's, there's women out there that have been told that you have uh, breast cancer and that, you, that, that there's hope, but you got to go through all these treatments. I'm telling you right now, let's go through with God, amen. Watch God bring you through. And I want to remind you right now that none of us are here to stay. I don't want to be a man of room and of, of doubt, but I want to be a man that's real. None of us are here to stay. But I want to know right now, I ask God to lead me around so I can fulfill my purpose. That's all. Hallelujah. Serve my generation and move on. Amen. And I don't believe he brought me this far. Hey, I don't believe he brought you this far. I don't believe he brought us this far. I don't believe it's over yet. I don't believe it's over yet. I believe we still got some work to do. And as long as God's got work for us to do, we're going to be here until he say, come on home. So I'm happy today that God is watching out for us in the midst of pestilence, in the midst of wickedness. Our God is a strong God. You know what he said? He said, put on the whole armor. He didn't say, you be strong in the power of your might. He said, be strong in the power of the Lord's might. Be strong in the Lord. And I was so happy this week when God let me know that, Michael, you're going through a lot. You got your child. You got yourself going on. You got your family to, go, to be worried about. But I want you to know that you shall not have to fight this battle. Somebody ought to give God a praise right there. You don't have to fight the battle because the battle is not yours. The battle belongs to God. Give God a praise right there. Get out of the fighting ring. Stop trying to fight your own battles. Because the Bible says it's put the armor on. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the loin cloth, the loin the belt of truth. And put on your, your, your shoes of, of peace. And put on the helmet of salvation. And hold up the sword of the spirit. And hold out the shield of faith. And what did he say do? And after you've done all you got to do, he didn't say fight. He said, after you've done all you got to do, he said, stand. And that's what I'm doing. Hallelujah. I'm not fighting. I'm just standing. I know God's got me. I see all these things that the psalm writer is saying. This pestilence and this darkness and this destruction that wastes in the noonday, morning, noon, and night. All these things come and arrows are flying. And if you had to protect yourself, you've been dead a long time ago. Arrows are flying from all directions, problems from all directions. How are you going to protect yourself? How are you going to fight off? This spiritual wickedness in high places. I want you to know you're no match for him. But I want you to know that under his wing, under his wing you can trust. Under his pavilion you can trust. And God said, Michael, I don't want you to fight. I want you to depend on me. And that's all I'm doing. I don't even think I have a big faith. But he said all you need 
is a faith of the side of a mustard seed. And you can say to the mountain, be moved and be cast in the sea, and it shall be done. So it's not the measure of your faith, it's the object of your faith. You say, I might have a small faith, but I serve a big God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I might have a, a faith that's weak sometimes, but I can say, like the man in the Bible says, when Jesus asked him, do you believe? He said, yes, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. Can I get a witness? Anybody need some help? I say, Lord, I'm believing, but I need you to help me where I'm unbelieving. I need you to help me strengthen me some so I can distrust you. You don't have to worry. You don't have to fret. Well, you have to fight your own battle. Stop fighting your own battle. Realize you can't fight off arrows. You can't see which way they're coming. You can't fight off pestilence that creeps in under the doors with no laws or no rules. You can't fight it. I was trying to fight the pandemic. But Satan is just like that. I had on double masks. I was doing all I could do, but the devil still tried to take my life. But I'm telling y'all right now, but I'm still standing. I'm trusting God, not only for my life, I'm trusting God for your life. I'm trusting God for our lives. That we'll come through this fulfilling the purpose of God. And I tell you like I tell you almost every week, either way we win. Amen. And God has a permanent healing for all of us. You know what's going to happen one day when I see him and look upon his face? I won't have to wear glasses anymore, but my vision will be 2020. I won't have aches and pains anymore because I'm going to have new legs. Hallelujah. I won't have to worry about sin and shame anymore because I realize in this life that you're going to have troubles here and there. But how many know we're just passing through? We're just pilgrims on our way. This is not your home. So stop trying to be comfortable. Stop trying to buy stuff to make yourself feel comfortable. I'm telling you, when you get wrapped up in Jesus Christ, he gives you peace and joy. And I'm telling you, it's coming a time we're going to be totally healed, all of us. And that's when we see Jesus. In a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, Everything's going to be healed. God may heal some of us on this side. He may not. I can't figure it out. I look in the Bible. I see Jesus. Sometimes he healed all of them. But sometimes he walked through a whole lot of sick ones to pick out one and say, take up your bed and walk. Y'all figure that out. All I know is God is sovereign. So whether God heals you on this side, whether God heals you on that side, I want you to know that either way, you win. Hallelujah. Give God a praise right there. I want you to know the Bible tells you that you read the end of the book. You find out that the fight has already been fixed. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad about it? Hallelujah. The king is coming riding on the white horse. Those of us that are here is going to accompany him. We're going to reign with him forever. God bless you, my family. I'm excited. God told us to rejoice in the Lord always. My joy is not that everything's wrong, everything around me is well. My joy is that everything inside is well. Amen. And when you have inside, when you have peace in the midst of your storm, we have joy when things around you should call you should be worried. But I'm not worried. You know why? Because God told me to rest in Him. Amen. I don't want you to worry. That's why I wanted to come to you today. I started to cancel service and act like tell nobody what's going on. Act like nothing's going on. But I, you know what? I think that we all need to be helped. Realize that we're in the world where stuff can touch our lives. Amen. But God promised never to leave nor forsake us. That's our joy. God bless you, my family. Thank you for spending that time with us today doing this service. I know you guys miss... Uh, uh, minister in training, Vashti singing. I miss it too. But uh, just hold out um, another week. We have to be, uh, I'm doing solo another week next week. And then we should be back by, by God's grace and mercy. We should be coming back full force on that, I think the fourth Sunday, something like that. So um, we'll probably postpone our um, community service until next month. 
But we move things around, but we're going to keep on doing God's will. And also our outreach ministry. I thank so many of you for what you have done. God got snacks and I got bags. We may have to push it back instead of mid um, February to the end of February, but I'll give you a date. We'll be doing that also. So we had to figure those things out. We just move. We just want to just to keep moving. Amen. But thank God for you today. So let me say a closing prayer for you today. Amen. And I'm gonna go and get back in the bed. <laughs> yeah, because I do get tired easily. So I'm gonna go be, get back in the bed and relax. So I want to thank the Lord for each one of you today. Amen. And I'm praying for God's richest blessing to be on your lives. I'm praying that God will keep the enemy away from your homes. I'm praying that those arrows will fall short of what they intended to do in your life. That pestilence that's stalking you and creeping you out, that's creeping behind your back, trying to get to you. The dark enemies, you know, we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but we wrestle against spiritual wickedness in our places. Enemies busy trying to destroy us. But I thank God that he's not, the enemy's not in control of me. Amen. God is my Savior, my Lord. Amen. I thank Jesus for being my Savior and Lord. So I'm praying today. For, my, for these people, for your children, oh God, those who've come to listen, I'm praying today for someone's life to be encouraged by your word, oh God. These things do come to oppress. These things do come against us, but we don't have to worry. You said, don't fear. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He said, don't be scared. You said, don't be afraid when these come out, these things come our way because you have our backs. You have us. You surround us. You are a shield of protection all around our lives. So for this, we just say thank you. So bless the homes that are gathered today, those who will hear this message later on. And I thank you, oh God, for being able to be with us at this time where we can just be candid and open to say what is going on and know that you've got control over everything in our lives. So we commit our way to you. Let your healing virtues flow through those who understand my voice. Let each home be safe and kept in your care. And I thank you for these things. And continue watching over my family, oh God. Continue watching over us and give us wisdom to know how to do it. Michael comes home. We need the wisdom. We need also that that the virus will not spread to my wife or my daughter, that it will stay just with me until it's gone. And praying they will not affect anybody else. So we just present this to you and thank you even now for healing me in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, family. Come back and be with us on Friday. We'll still have our um Bible study Friday night. At seven, we'll still have our Sunday school service um, at nine to nine thirty on Sunday morning, and we'll be back here again, Lord's will and Amen, uh, with another word from the Lord from Psalm ninety one. God bless you, my family. I love you guys. Uh, send me a message uh, through Facebook. Those on Facebook, any questions or comments, just put them there. Now I show I read each one. I try to go to each one and put a like there, and let you know I I read your messages and I enjoy seeing your responses. So God bless you, my family. May heaven smile upon, may heaven smile upon you. Amen.